What is white fragility? What does it mean to have white fragility? Well, it's a term that is meant to capture a fairly familiar dynamic and at this point familiar worldwide, and that is the fairly predictable defensiveness and upset uh, that many white people respond with whenever our racial worldviews are challenged. So the fragility part is meant to capture how little it takes to get us upset. Why is it still so difficult for people to talk about race and privilege? There's not a single reason. There are a lot of reasons that come together. And, and first and foremost is what we think it means to suggest that someone is racist. So there's, there's a lot of defensiveness. People uh, believe that they are being uh, called a bad person. Uh, so many parents who themselves cannot think critically about their own whiteness, uh, who themselves aren't educated on this topic, don't have much emotional capacity to withstand the discomfort of these conversations. Um, and then they're just turning to say, so how do I teach my children to do better at it? As you integrate those awareness and skills into your life, it will automatically be infused in your child's life. And why do you think it is so important for white families who have children to really be in touch with these issues around race when their kids are very young? You know, white people uh, control virtually all the institutions uh, of the society. We are the ones who sit at the tables making decisions that affect the lives every single day of people who aren't sitting at those tables. Those, the way that society is set up, those white children, particularly of course, if they're of the middle and upper classes, will grow up to sit at those tables of power and decision-making. Uh, and so it, it's something you wanna have infused in their consciousness all through their lives uh, to begin to change the culture. Uh, most white people live segregated lives. Uh, we live the most segregated lives of any group and in segregated from black people in particular. And so we're left to rely on deeply problematic sources for our understanding of black people. So uh, your children are relying on jokes, omissions, warnings, and very narrow, repetitive uh, media representations. Uh, but they're going to go forth uh, and in large part uh, be leaders in the world. So you can only reproduce that racist status quo if you aren't seeking to challenge it. You said you grew up knowing that white was better. You know, there are many ways. There, there are the less explicit ways, such as virtually all role models, heroes, heroines, books, uh, being white. Almost every teacher, uh, any white person has ever had. Many of us uh, go through graduate school and rarely, if ever, uh, are taught by someone that is not of our race. Uh, God, Jesus, Mary, <laughs> um, these images. Uh, when you read a book or a novel, uh, race is generally only named if it is not white. It's pretty relentless. Uh, one of the images I show in my presentations is the, the two girls from Frozen. Just, just to make the point, the research is clear that by age three to four, children who grow up here understand it's better to be white. But I think most parents recognize uh, pretty early on that their children have absorbed problematic racial ideas. They come home from school and they say things um, and they talk about other children in particular ways. So your child might have been born racially innocent, but they don't stay that way for very long. And when you project this innocent on, innocence onto them, when you say, well, I don't think they're old enough to have this conversation, you're leaving them unattended to the messages. They have no way to resist those messages. So it's on you to figure out, okay, what would be an age appropriate way to be having these conversations, but they should be going on all, all the time. If you could offer parents, white parents in particular, a toolkit of how to approach this topic with their young children, what would you say? I would say it's a little bit like saying, um, I'd like to be in shape and my children be in shape on Monday. Um, and then I would say to you, you will not be in shape on Monday, neither will they. So you can get started on Monday and it will be a multi-part process. So maybe the first thing that they can do is just simply take out a piece of paper and start to make a list on why they don't know what to do, why they don't know how to raise their kids uh, in, in an anti-racist way. And they there will be their map right there. And nothing on that list is going to be easy. Easy, but every every 
thing on that can be done. And there are so many good resources today.